ENB's second case isolated. Essential staff in isolation. And baking through a global pandemic. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Friday's news. At least 300 people employed by various key government agencies who are working from the Joint Agency Task Force National Operations Center established to monitor the government's response to COVID-19 are now in self-isolation after their samples were collected yesterday and today. This follows a serious breach in security after a 40-year-old woman who tested positive for COVID-19 was reported to have been working out of the NOC-19. The woman, identified by Prime Minister James Marape as a frontline responder, had her samples taken for testing a week ago before the results came back positive. MTV News understands the government is yet to explain how she tested positive for COVID-19, bringing the total confirmed cases in the country to seven. Amongst those who had their samples collected for testing in Port Mosby include journalists, photographers and camera operators from all mainstream media houses, including the Prime Minister's media unit, security personnel, health workers and other key government agencies like Air New Guinea, PNG Customs and the National Maritime Safety Authority. Prime Minister James Marope and other government ministers who had visited NOC-19 were also tested for COVID-19 at the newly established testing facility at the Rita Flynn Netball Court. For country, uh, government is still at work. We are being proactive in uh, responding to the need to ensure we contain in as much as possible uh, corona from not coming in. And if it does come in, in, in the five cases that has now been established as positive, we will do everything possible to ensure the containment of it uh, be done to the best of ability and it doesn't spread from one place to another or from one person to another. The operation center on NOC 19 at Morauta House is now in lockdown and the government says contact tracing has begun in Port Mosby. But the government will need some time to establish how wide the contact tracing will be, especially when over 200 people visit NOC 19 on a daily basis. On Wednesday, 24 hours before NOC 19 went into lockdown, Prime Minister James Marope, the Transport Minister and a number of media personnel visited the third level of Morauta House, the heart of the COVID-19 response centre and also the area where the person who tested positive was reported to have visited on the same day. The PM's visit on Wednesday was to launch a vessel tracking system that is anticipated to increase maritime surveillance for all international shipping vessels that come into PNG waters. In our limitations are doing everything we, uh, we can uh, to the best of our ability to ensure our economy and our country functions with knowledge that Corona will be amidst us, uh, not necessarily only for the next two months, but from medical evidence as well as uh, scientific uh, evidence that is, uh, that is uh, available, it shows that Corona will be around for some time. And so our country must live on, our country must progress on. But while those whose samples were collected were advised to remain in self-isolation until their results are released, Papua New Guineans are asking the question as to why the person who tested positive in NCD was not kept in isolation in the first place. Following the first positive COVID-19 case reported in NCD and the fact that all frontliners in Port Mosby are now in self-isolation, the SOE controller is yet to highlight how the national government will continue to respond effectively to COVID-19 in Papua New Guinea, with most essential workers now in self-isolation. Sekla Gunga in isolation, National MTV News. 
Northeast New Britain's SOE controller Wilson Matava says the second positive COVID-19 case in the province has been isolated. The 37-year-old male COVID-19 patient resides at the Kinabot Stage 2 residential estate. Matava says the Kinabot Stage 2 area has been locked down since yesterday afternoon following the Prime Minister's announcement. He says more tests are expected to be carried out on more than 200 persons of interest in the province in the coming days. We locked down part of the streets at Kennebot, stage two. We will lock them down, finish. Uh, we have isolated the, uh, the confirmed case. We will isolate them. We will by continue to make him, uh, some more tests, not only in Kennebot, but also uh, along some of the part Kennebot, on six club world, we will lock him down. Uh, for tomorrow uh, and onwards, our plan is to at least him over 200 to 300 uh, tests when we plan make him inside the province. So far, the progress is good, and uh, we appeal all people to Britain. Long this time, you may uh, go through long this time. I appeal for your understanding. We all in East New Britain must know uh, that this uh, case is uh, for us. There's two cases already in East New Britain. We appeal all the people of the province, not only in Kokopo, but in the whole province. We appeal to you, Plano Stablo House, long this time. With East New Britain recording a second COVID-19 positive case, New Ireland is stepping up its surveillance. Governor Sir Julius Chan says the provincial government will use its resources to ensure communities are protected and warned of the COVID-19 threat. Sir Julius says the pandemic will affect flow of government services for an uncertain extent of time. ready Speaking in New Ireland, Governor Sir Julius Chen says the virus has now proven its capabilities. He says Papua New Guinea is challenged to address its threat. Governor Chen says people are urged to follow health directives, including SOE orders. You know something, but you may um, also kiss him na bread long end. I mean, part of the plague of nature. I mean, part long all kind totally inside inside long well. So suppose you may you look out him good sit down, uh, clean him good, bless long I think by non up kiss him New Island. New Island is classified code green. A budget of 450,000 kina is being utilized for awareness, border surveillance, curfew, and other SOE orders. While these measures are being implemented, Governor Chen says it is crucial for people to head higher. He encouraged washing of hands, social distancing and limit movement. So now this place come, you may try to gain him or kind kind some sample line or the talk or some. Suppose you wash him hand, you know can pass close to, now you know can boom to us on this time and you may can avoid him this for a sick year is a club long when he come. With neighbor province East New Britain recording a second positive case, New Island is keeping its surveillance on its borders. Chairman of the New Island COVID Task Force team Lamila Pawut says those breaching the law will be arrested and charged. We're just seeking the wisdom of the people. We're seeking clear understanding and self-enforcement. Uh, strategy to allow people to enforce this. We're seeking understanding of them all. Uh. Meanwhile, 104 individuals have been identified as person of interest in New Ireland province. Of these, 12 samples were sent for testing with all retaining negative. While the SOE is in place, Governor Chen says essential government services will be affected, including infrastructure plans. He urged communities to become as levels of government work around the clock to stop further transmission. One plus something this one me like to tell long end. Program long government long development long this play year now by the affected. Jagla Pava Jr. National M TV News. Lay City Authority is inviting ward councillors within Lay Urban LLG to submit COVID-19 awareness programs for funding. LCA Chief Executive Officer Neil Ellery said these programs should be at the minimum cost of 25,000 kina. The programs can vary from awareness to distribution of preventative equipment. 
That is. Um, Lay City Authority CEO Neil Ellery says LCA will be meeting the cost of awareness programs and not handing out cash to ward councillors. His that, statement that, clears rumours that, that ward um, councillors were to be handed cash to facilitate awareness programs. Ward councillors, however, are to submit awareness program proposals costing a minimum of 25,000 kina to LCA for funding. Uh, we have a VSS grant that has come in that um, we've advised the councillors that they can do programs up to 25,000 kina. Uh, the money's not paid directly to the councillors, they have to form programs. Um, and that could be education, it could be awareness, it could be uh, distribution of uh, hygiene products like soap or whatever into their direct wards. Following the first confirmed COVID-19 case in the province, the Morbe COVID-19 Response Committee has been utilizing various avenues for awareness. Church leaders, as well as ward councillors, are the key people to get in the message across to a larger medium of people. The ward base is the key base to get the information into. Um, the, a lot of them won't have the social media, the TVs. Meanwhile, AHI LLG President Malcolm Kahlo has already briefed his ward councillors for awareness plans. Funding is the only delay now to get things started. So, we have already finished, but problem solved of funding also, and we have with stop. Shalin Eri, National MTV News, Lee. The opposition has urged the government to tighten its efforts as more positive COVID-19 cases are being detected. Opposition leader Belden Nama says with the five new cases announced, more effects of the COVID-19 pandemic will cause panic and anxiety. Meanwhile, Shadow Health Minister and Rabaul MP Dr. Alan Marat says the government must also consider the geopolitics of developed nations, including our closest neighboring nations in the region. Despite the government doing every effort to address the COVID-19 threat, the opposition is saying not enough is being done. Leader Belden Nama says economically, PNG is trying to keep its head above the water and plot limited funding to address the pandemic. He criticized the use of the 23 million kina and says there must be accountability. These are monies which are supposed to be used in those areas. And again, the question is, where did these monies come from? These are public funds. And James Marape and his two ministers and the controller need to account for these public funds. Shadow Health Minister and Rabal MP Dr. Alan Marat expressed concerns surrounding the limited funding the state is utilizing. Dr. Marat says the government must also look at what's happening around the world. He says the government must not overlook issues crippling the economy. There are raging international issues, especially between America and China, surrounding the origins and the nature of the COVID-19. With the five new cases being announced yesterday, controller David Manning is urging the mass population to remain calm as authorities attempt to ensure there is no further transmission. With the NOC 19 under lockdown as of yesterday, more anxiety is being created in public forums. The opposition says the government must improve from its current status to assure the 8 plus million people. The government has done something, but we say it's not enough. It has not done enough to prevent more fear from being spread, uh, more damage done to families. Our people are now left in a state of shock and panic. Business houses are suffering. People are suffering. Their freedom has been taken away. Jagla Pava Jr. National MTV News. This is National MTV News, NCD and Western Province under curfew as of tonight. That story and more when we come back. Welcome back. 
National Planning Minister Sam Basel has announced that the government has begun work on a freight subsidy for sea and air as part of its economic stimulus package. With the restrictions from the COVID-19 state of emergency, Basel announced that his department is in discussions to effect and ensure sustained sea and air transport services are maintained. Minister Basel confirmed that State of Emergency Controller David Manning has issued a directive to his department, especially on the fresh food and vegetables freight already. A number of memorandum of understandings and service level agreements are being worked on and will be announced before funding is made available. On a brighter note, the economic struggle brought about by the COVID-19 global pandemic is a worry for business. Yet there is still success for a small to medium enterprise operating as a cake business in PNG. Tapioca Delight, a family-run business, is getting orders from Papua New Guineans living overseas to bake cakes and pastries for delivery to loved ones back home. Made with love from a humble kitchen home. Happiness baked and dressed in cream for the cake and pastry lovers. This is Tapioca Delight, a small SME baking its way through the stressful economic times. We implemented what is called the emergency fund and that is, has actually been uh, something that we've been able to have the confidence to have the finances available. So for two years now we've been saving up, we've really uh, improved in our financial behavior uh, as a business and personally as business owners. So because of that emergency fund we're able to keep our staff now. Ginia is the owner of the company. She and her husband started off this business from her passion in baking. Now, eight years on, the determined owners have moved on to other innovative ways to bring in customers. This now from the traditional manual payments to one now done electronically. Internet Payment Gateway or IPG as it is known and our bank BSP has, uh, we're very happy that uh, they have offered this uh, platform so it's an e-commerce platform and uh, it, we went live on Tuesday so we're very excited that we're able to receive payments uh, during this time from customers who don't have to come to our location physically and pay cash or use the FPOS and they don't even have to um, pay online with our account details those options are still available. Surprisingly, Mrs. Cialis and her team of dedicated workers during the SOE are doing orders from overseas where citizens are purchasing cakes for their loved ones back home in PNG. Of, uh, four actually are coming in from Australia. Yes, yeah, so our um, One Talks in Australia picked up on the news that this was available and then they, they had a go and placed their orders. The success story in innovation of this SME has brought about glimpse of hope for the other small businesses, one that comes at a time where others like it are crumbling in silence. Of all the orders coming in daily, cakes remain the top item on sale, this time in small sizes. Families still celebrating a loved one's birthday in small groupings at home. Bradley Valenaki, National MTV News. There is now evidence people are able to grow rice for household consumption and for commercial purposes, according to NARI's Director General, Dr. Sergi Bang. Dr. Bang went live on air last night in Leh, speaking to listeners from five districts in Marbe on the Lutheran Christian Radio COVID-19 talk show, an initiative by Leh's media organization and the Evangelical Lutheran Church. He spoke on food security and supply and how the government through NARI is planning to help local increase food production to help families during the COVID-19 pandemic and onwards. Nari's Director General Dr. Sergi Bang said rice is a very important food and is highly demanded by a large population. Dr. Bang confirmed last night that the locals in most rural districts in Morbe and other provinces are now growing rice just like other food crops for family consumption. Nari has stepped in to assist the locals in providing rice meals to help ease the burden of transporting rice from the villages to lay, to mill and sell. 
Dr. Bang was live on air as one of the guests of the 89.1 FM Lutheran Christian Radio COVID-19 talk show broadcasted live from 7 p.m. to 9 to the listeners of five districts in Morobe. The local production, uh, our slime uh, district where Mbulam is supporting me, um, uh, no, me not, in, me not had enough production yet long. Uh, long feeding of along Morobe, yeah, I'll only grow him up low. Yeah. The awareness on food security and production made by Dr. Bang last night at the Lutheran Christian Radio in Ley follows the extension of the SOE orders of the COVID-19 in the country. Food security is to have enough good healthy food and the ability to access it. Having enough healthy food to make it through every day could be a struggle for some people and can affect their livelihoods. Rice is what most families consider as sustenance. According to Dr. Seji Bang, families have realized its importance and can now grow rice for consumption. Along community or along rural areas in Blago, Karaina, Kabum, Tep Tep, MM only only growing blow yet now, only you know, supplying law. It's only marketing marketing law line of class too. So in aim of class and business too come up because you're talking some demand and stuff. So right there we got potential like a one black cash crop in the place. It can become a cash crop. PNG imports about four hundred tons of rice at a cost of six hundred million kina every year. This also shows that rice is demanded by almost six million people of PNG's eight million population. Long growing four hundred thousand tons of rice in a year, long medium demand, long PNG long one player, plus start off and we need some like capital investment, um, close to fifty million kinana, you need uh, between ten and twenty thousand hectares. The government is now focusing on promoting the cultivation of domestic rice to feed the people. To save money from importing rice from overseas rice here, yeah. and to support Today, future initiatives to export locally grown rice. Nari's Director General Dr. Sejibang said uh, the government has requested Nari and its partners to help educate the local producers and rice farmers on how to cultivate the land and increase rice production. Julie Badui Oa, National MTV News, Lay. The issuing of the National Emergency Order No. 16 by State of Emergency Controller David Manning in light of the first confirmed cases in Port Moresby and Western Province will be a tough task for police. Most in Port Moresby and the Western Province are not used to curfews and strict rules on social distancing. NCD Governor Pois Pakop has called on city residents to be united to the cause of fighting the COVID-19 pandemic in the city. With the first local transmission COVID-19 confirmed case in Port Moresby, the nation's capital is on lockdown, with State of Emergency Controller David Manning issuing National Emergency Order No. 16. The order covers the National Capital District and Western Province, where three cases have also been confirmed. There are 17 directives on the signed document by David Manning, but I will only be highlighting a few important points. Manning issued the orders to have a curfew few which starts tonight from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. daily which will end on the 30th of April unless extended by the emergency controller. The orders also give directives for residents to adhere to social distancing and safe hygienic practices. Also for purposes of this order no persons shall gather in groups of more than four persons in public places. All forms of public transport including taxis are prohibited. Also, the sale and purchase of alcohol is prohibited, even consumption of it in public places. Gambling activities and services, nightclubs, pubs and musical and cultural activities, including religious services and church activities, are prohibited. The orders also outline that non-compliance with the emergency orders should be reported to an authorized officer or to the provincial police commander. The governor of NCD Powers Pakop has been dreading this day and yesterday went live on Facebook to urge residents of Port Mosby to adhere to the restrictions. Stop low house, knock and boom in big numbers. Now control I am put him order can or seven. Before you may talk hundred can boom here. Now M Tambu. You must four or less. Four plus man Mary, you can boom. Big plan number, you miss a boom here. 
and you may lose him now. Lose him now. Port Mosby in its diversity was called on by the governor to come together and be united in the fight against the global pandemic. All of us are in this together. Before you make a kind kind heavy and across to each other, yeah. Lime Lo Nambis, Lime Lo Islands, Lime Lo Papua, Lime Lo NGI, you block a kind kind thing thing like each other, yeah. You may lose in this line up. Forget about this type of difference, the kind kind. We are in this together as one people, one country, one city. The governor acknowledged businesses and citizens who have been practicing social distancing in public places. Line up, lo queue, lo bank, yeah, and two meters, two meters. Plenty line, lo you meet to lo city, only are him talk, na be any best advice you may give him. Help him, you may lo prevent. Me to thank you, long all. But some line, lo are him talk, so you may need him, give him. You may need him, give him. Fidelis Sukina National, MTV News. Medang Resort has been losing close to 6 million kina in revenue, affecting its operations due to the global pandemic COVID-19. The hotel normally has 150 employees. However, it is forced to lay off 120 workers and is operating with only 30 staff. Owner Sir Peter Bata says the situation is very difficult, but they are managing and remain open for business. Medang Resort is situated in the heart of the town. Like many other businesses, the business is struggling while being open for business. The hotel that usually gets over 100 guests and tourists every day now get less guests. We've got a skeleton mm -hmm. staff. We've, we have contract officers which we have to keep. We can't do anything about. Even so that we're, we're looking at some of the contract officers' tenure. Mm. But the trouble is they can't leave the country anyway. Mm. Most of the employees have been put on a week-on, week-off schedule, while kitchen staff, housekeepers and other workers were laid off during this period. But there are essential staff that we need here all the time for continuity, our accounting staff and uh, they're working. For the kitchen staff and the dining room staff, the housekeepers, of course, we just don't need this. We don't need them at the moment. Mm. So they've been laid off. Casuals have been laid off. Sepi Tabata, who had been in Medang for a long time, regards most of his staff as family and is finding it very difficult to terminate his employees, saying most of his workers are third and fourth generation employees and terminate them is not an option he would like to take. I've had staff with me up to 30, 35 years. And it's really hard to throw them out because a lot of them live with us in the, in the property. And they've got families, they've been brought up here, and their second generation's employed here. Even the third generation has been employed here. Mm. Uh, I just can't throw them on the street. Martha Lewis, National and TV News, Medeg. The construction of a new shopping plaza is underway at the Brian Bell Home Centre at Gordon's in Port Moresby. The home centre is under reconstruction to be transformed and extended into a new plaza. Construction of the building has already begun and will be completed soon. The new shopping plaza is expected to have all divisions from home centres, trade electrical, chemicals and agriculture. Brian Bell Group Chief Executive Officer Cameron McKellar says the company is due to open the Brian Bell shopping plaza within the next six weeks. Mr. McKellar says they are excited to have a new shopping plaza that will allow Papua New Guineans to come and experience some great retailing. For us, it's a very significant capital investment uh, for Brian Bell, uh, and unfortunately, it's against the backdrop of you know some pretty uh, serious situations that are taking place in PNG. So we're likely to probably have a fairly soft opening uh, initially, and then a more formal opening once the state of emergency is released. And now looking at the NAS fund market report, the key now opened unchanged at 0.291 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina will buy 0.4437 Australian dollars, 0.2835 US dollars, 0.4712 New Zealand dollars and 29.97 Japanese yen. 
Looking at commodity prices at New York closed gold is trading lower, coffee closed lower, cocoa and copper closed higher. Palm oil closed lower, crude oil is trading higher and copper closed lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the All Ordinaries is trading lower and the ASX 200 is trading lower. You're watching National MTV News. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll bring you stories making headlines overseas. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. Turning overseas now, New York City has more than 6,000 confirmed and more than 4,000 probable coronavirus deaths, according to the city's website. The health department there has defined probable deaths as people who did not have a positive laboratory test, but their death certificate lists COVID-19 as the cause of death anyway. That's because many of them are dying undiagnosed and alone at home. Leonardo Frazier shows CNN the simple looking device that made all the difference for him. You scrap it on your wrists here. It's a finger monitor measuring Frazier's oxygen, heart, and blood. The 54 year old wore it at home alone while he was battling coronavirus. It was connected to his cell phone, and when his condition took a sudden nosedive, it let his doctors in northeastern Ohio know. And told me I needed to be in the E. I needed to come down to the ER uh, immediately. And so that's what I did. Frazier says he felt so incapacitated at home alone that he doesn't know if he'd have had the wherewithal to get himself to the hospital. And this right here has saved my life, and that's why I'm here today. But Frazier's is a rare case. He happened to be placed in a pilot program at University Hospitals in Ohio, designed to help save the lives of patients who are fighting coronavirus from home, where experts say a victim's condition can plummet in an instant. It's unpredictable. And so some patients will go home and they'll stay well. Their lungs will get improved. Others may deteriorate. Uh, we don't know who will. And often they deteriorate and die at home with no one knowing. Officials in the area's hardest hit say they're struggling now to count those who are isolated with the virus at home. And the numbers of people they believe are dying at home, they say, are staggering. New York City Councilman Mark Levine, who chairs the city's health committee, said before the pandemic, 20 to 25 people died at home in New York on an average day. But in recent days, Levine says, it's been over 200 people a day who are dying at home. We presume that most of that increase is due to coronavirus. Even with ramped up testing, experts say, the numbers of those who died from coronavirus may be well undercounted when all is said and done because of the massive gaps in monitoring of those who died at home. I think during this acute period of time where so many people are not accessing medical care, the, the folks who are dying at home, the numbers that you're talking about, this will definitely, I think, be a blind spot during this period of time. New York state officials are now scrambling to try to fill those gaps of information, devising ways of counting probable coronavirus deaths, including victims who were not previously tested and those dying at home whose symptoms fit certain parameters of the virus. I mean, it's just horrendous. But the numbers speak for themselves. I've been over this with our health colleagues that this used to be a very, very rare thing in New York City. And suddenly uh, it's jumped up. It obviously the only thing that's changed is COVID-19. But experts say getting a truly accurate count of the overall numbers of people who died from coronavirus at home may be near impossible. One doctor told us there's another category of people who could be counted as overall victims of this pandemic. The people who die at home from things like heart attacks, strokes and other illnesses who refuse to go to the hospital out of fear they might get coronavirus. The UK government has extended the stay-home orders for at least three more weeks. Authorities say measures to slow the spread of the coronavirus have been successful. 
Well, the government, of course, has been under a lot of pressure to give an indication of how it will end the current lockdown, how, what its exit strategy is. We got our first indications of that from the government today. The Secretary of uh, State for Foreign Affairs, also the uh, first Secretary of State for the country, Dominic Raab, laid it out. Five points. Point number one, that the health service can cope, meaning that they've got enough critical care beds. Secondly, that there is a sustained and measured decrease in the number of deaths. Thirdly, that there is reliable data, and I think that's an important point, reliable data that the number of infections are going down. So what the government is telling us here is that this is going to be science-led. The fourth thing, and this is something the government's been criticised for failing on so far, failing to have enough personal protective equipment, PPE, and failing to have enough tests to test the presence of the virus. The government says the fourth point is they must know that they have adequate and capable uh, amounts of PPE and tests available. And the fifth point, they say, and again, this is a very important one, that the National Health Service, the health service, can cope with any eventuality that whatever the government does to get out of the current lockdown situation doesn't create a second wave, a second spike of infections that would overwhelm the health service. So those are the five points the government's laid out. Very clear for now that uh, lockdown is going to stay in place till the 7th of May. It'll come up for review then in three weeks. Researchers from at least four countries are looking to the past for a possible weapon in the fight against COVID-19. They're focusing on the century-old tuberculosis vaccine, which could lessen the symptoms of the virus. This is not a cure for COVID-19, but it could be an injection of hope. 4,000 health workers in Australia have been given a BCG vaccine for tuberculosis. That vaccine has been around for over a century, but researchers argue it might also lessen the severity of COVID-19 by boosting the body's ability to fight off the infection before it gets worse. Professor Nigel Curtis is running the trial. So if we find that the BCG vaccine and its ability to boost the immune system does decrease the severity of COVID-19, we would have something kind of off the shelf that we can use hopefully during this pandemic or if there were a second wave. A New York study that has not yet been peer-reviewed claims countries with high COVID-19 death rates, such as the US, did not have universal BCG vaccination policies, while those that routinely vaccinate against TB, like South Africa, are fairly a lot better. Most people here will have been injected with the BCG vaccine in their childhood, but medical experts warn this is not a magic bullet. And so they continue to screen and test for COVID-19 across South Africa, which means getting out into the townships to spread the word. The Australian BCG trial results are still a few months away, but it's hoped an old vaccine could become a new weapon in the war against the coronavirus. Chukai Sports is next. Here's Godwin at the sports desk. Thank you, Helen. Well, after the break, we have rugby league and super rugby abroad. Details in Chukai Sports. That's next. Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. PNG Rugby Football League is expected to make announcements regarding the commercial sustainability of current programs and the revised option for the domestic and international playing calendar. These decisions will take into consideration the health and welfare of all stakeholders and the greater interest of the game. The impact of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and restrictions has had serious consequences for not just the football calendar, but also the operations of the PNG RFL across all its six-tier competition structure. The six-tier competitions are the Mini Mode, Coca-Cola National Schools Rugby League, Affiliate League competitions, the Intercity Cup, the SP Hunters participation in the Queensland Interest Super Cup and the Kumuls and Orchids matches. 
also affected at domestic and international tournaments, such as the provincial, confederate and national championships for all divisions as well as PNG RFL HQ operations and the outstanding PNG RFL AGM, which continues to be deferred pending the lifting of restrictions under the SOE. PNG RFL's main challenge is planning around the pandemic on when it will be effectively contained and the future consequences it will have on the sport. PNG RFL is closely monitoring the situation in the country in consultation with the relevant authorities and key partners. They are expected to make some major announcements soon. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. New Zealand Sports Minister has ruled out any initial training for Super Rugby teams. Further afield, World Rugby is putting up $200 million to help out with New Zealand Rugby confirming they are in discussions for assistance. Fresh in the job as Wales national coach and all of a sudden a global pandemic lands right on your doorstep. It's ripping through the communities over here so you know at the, at the moment we've had two or three cases that, we're, that I'm aware of within, within our squad. The infected players have recovered. Wales, like the rest of the world though, is struggling. Based just out of Cardiff, PVAC and his management have lost 25% of their wages. Players will now follow suit. With no international rugby for the foreseeable future, global assistance is welcome. I think as you're seeing with governments um, obviously supporting people that need to be supported, uh, the, the national body or World Rugby for like doing the same thing, it's, it's a no-brainer really. World Rugby officials are also expected to reveal in the next few weeks plans for a possible restart to test football later in the year. That could mean the rugby championship here is played and the All Blacks then host a northern side like Wales in five or six months, then head north themselves in November. I don't think anybody wants these two to, to be cancelled. It's a matter of we, we need them to be played, we need the money into the game uh, for the game to survive and I think uh, we're all in the same boat there. Pivac says the positive out of this current crisis is there's more hope than ever for a global season to finally be worked out between the northern and southern hemispheres. The coronavirus appears to have forced rugby's hand. Truk Eye Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. True Kai Sports. Welcome back to True Kai Sports. With rugby pay cuts looming, the All Blacks can't wait for the national tests. Midfield candidate Nigani Laumape says, as a father, he will certainly miss certain parts of the lockdown. From busting through the line to being stuck in lines at Wellington supermarkets. I got there and I was like, 30 people in front of me, so I had to do the wait in line. Spending time on calls with Ngani Laumape, you see the impressive home gym. What catches your attention is his time with the kids. It's been weeks of building dinosaur houses, even the Hurricanes fitness program is done together. For sons Daniel and Seal, this is really special. You know, I was at his first birthday. But um, I had to go to a promo halfway through. Ever since then, I haven't been at the rest of his birthdays um, due to rugby commitments. So um, for me, I was just trying to make up for lost time now. Sacrifice isn't new to La Mape's family, who moved from Tonga to Palmerston North in the 90s. All the hard work that we did when he's growing up has paid off. For me, this is why I go hard. It gives them perspective, especially when people expect them to be bitter over missing a certain tournament last year. Why wouldn't I use the platform that I have now to spread positivity and to inspire someone so that the next kid from Harmi doesn't have to feel um, shy to, to say what he wants to say or, or to feel like he's going to get mocked. 2020, the big chance to really grab that black 12 jersey. Although this year's recently published Almanac shows who experts think should have been wearing it all along. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast in the southern region. Cloudy weather, then fine in Port Moresby. Fine, although cloudy in Darrow and Kerama. Mostly fine weather in Alotau and cloudy with a shower or two in Popandita. In the Mamasa region, cloudy weather, although fine in Leigh.
cloudy with a shower or two in Middang, mostly fine weather in Wewak and Fanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, cloudy weather, although fine in Lorengau and KVN, Kokopo and Rabaul included, mostly fine weather in Kimbe and Buka. And in the Highlands region, showers, then morning fog in Mount Hagen, cloudy with some showers later in Goroka and Kundiawa, fine weather with morning fog in Mendi and Wabek. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus, with you always. And that's the way it is this Friday, the 17th of April 2020. From the news team, pleasant viewing. Good night.